Hey, I understand Adam said yesterday or today that he would like to have a regular season game in, in, in Africa. I know Larry has spoken about the Raptors being involved in any first over there. Have you just had discussions about this, and, and what would your feelings be going forward on that one? Um, I, I, we're definitely, we're, I think we've definitely had discussions, you know, um, and, but they're all, you know, uh, I think elementary in, 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 in some ways. Um, uh, uh, I've talked to Larry, and uh, he's, he's very, very interested in uh, if this came about, if the league uh, decided to do something like that. Uh, we would definitely be a team that uh, that's very very interested. From my standpoint, you know, uh, yes, uh, in discussions, whether it's over here or uh, with Adam or Adam uh, or Amadou or um, uh, with Larry, uh, obviously it's something that would be uh, that would have a huge interest in and would love uh, the Raptors to be a uh, to be a part of. I think uh, it'll be it'll be historical and <laughs> if. if if we're bidding out being the forefront. And just a, just a quick quick follow up. This being the first game on on the continent, uh, what are, what what's your feelings of, of with all that you've done on in Africa that this is finally going to happen? Uh, it's, it's it's big for us. It's uh, um, you know as we continue to grow the game here and as it's expanded uh, and the NBA has expanded globally, just. Um, it's remarkable um, coming from maybe even like the first year I did uh, basketball without borders in 2003 up to today. And um, sitting in, in the room doing uh, in South Africa, doing media here and right in front of me is Marcus Opalzo, for his Piao, Vucevic. Um, it's, it's incredible to see all these guys here. Um, I, I think... Um, uh, we, we we continue to watch the game and watch the game uh, and watch watch the uh, um, uh, the NBA and the, the fans that follow it from 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 Africa here to see these guys live um, and uh, on the continent. Um, uh, all the play all, all the African players have taken interest in this. Uh, we ran the camp the last couple of days and got to see Chris Paul and. Uh, and all these guys here, so, and then Sergi Baka and uh, Akim Olaju, all the, the, the legends. It's, it's crazy it's, uh, that this game is actually like happening um, now. And um, I think um, for plenty, plenty kudos to uh, to Adam for, for for making. I think for making this happen. It's built up over uh, many years, but um, he has he has made this a, a priority for us and and really helped us and. Amadou Fall has done an unbelievable job, um, I think, with the NBA Africa office here. So um, it's, it's it's historical for us. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Masai, this is Jeff Zilgit at USA Today. I hope you're doing well. Um, mm-hmm. Masai, I wanted to ask you about maybe the, the, the big picture potential of African players continuing to come to the United States. I, I know there's a handful. Um, and there's so many grassroots efforts going on right now in Africa. How do you see the potential of developing NBA quality players over the years and maybe seeing a real influx even more so than we have right now of African players into the NBA? Well, what, what's going to come about this will be, you know, like uh, I think development of, uh, of uh, more clinics, more camps, um, a game is played, more competition, uh, more youth competition, and then you start going into facilities, uh, infrastructure here, uh, building courts. Um, to me, um, it continues to grow. You know, on uh, right on Sunday, uh, I'm, uh, with my foundation, I'm going, I'm going to uh, Nigeria, uh, Ghana, uh, Kenya, and Rwanda, and building a court in Kenya. And I can tell you this is inspired by Basketball Without Borders and the chance that uh, the NBA gave me and being part of this camp and trying to model some of the stuff that I do uh, with my foundation. The, that tells that says a lot because uh, there's so many other players, so many other um, uh, people that are doing little things. And this will continue to bring out and uh, expose more young players, give them more opportunity because 
uh, at the camp here, you know, like um, it, it's great. The kids are great, and um, they, these kids will move on to different uh, places and opportunity, and they'll continue to grow. But there are younger ones have, um, before uh, coming right after them, and uh, we have to we have to create that opportunity, and that's by building courts, I think, and and creating more competition, uh, more tournaments. Um, building more infrastructure and and help coach the coaches here because it's 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 needed. But this exposure of this game, um, the camps continue to grow. I, I think it's, it's it's huge for us. And, and just a quick follow up on that, Masai. I know you talked just a, a a little bit right now on the infrastructure, the courts, the clinics, competition, and coaches. But when it gets right down to the players, you are seeing at any age you are definitely starting to see the talent emerge and the possible potential. <laughs> yes, uh, you you do. And, and you know, wherever you go, you're honestly, like, around the world, the game is global now. There There is talent. It's how, you know, it's nurtured and how um, the opportunity that's giving him. Uh, you, uh, some of these kids in Africa were trying to give them opportunity to play um, to play younger. The reason, the reason why you see African soccer and well, football has 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 grown uh, to where it is is because uh, it's in us. We 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 start playing at a young age. Uh, well, it's playing with two stones uh, used as goalposts. You know, like at the back of our house or at the side of the road or in your garden or anywhere you can go. Just uh, go and play. Basketball is not the same. You know, it needs uh, you need the uh, the floor, be it outdoor, indoor, and you need the goals um, and and uh, or the baskets and rims and and you know it's 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 not it's not something easy to get. So kids start playing at at, at a late age, and we're, we're trying to get them to play younger, more basketball in schools, more youth programs, and 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 I think that will uh, that will enhance. Uh, um, uh, the growth of of the game and the growth of uh, some of the youth that 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 play play the game. Thank you, Masai. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, Masai. It's Ryan Wolfstad here. How you doing? How you doing, man? Good. I want to ask you about Bismack. Um, obviously, you know him pretty well. What do you think he'll provide to the team? And um, have you seen? Did you see something last year, some growth, and because of his age, you still see him uh, having a ways to go? Um, you know, he's a growing player, too. You know, he's uh, he's trying to find, uh, uh, I, I think, a niche in the NBA. Uh, he's, try, he's trying to, um, uh, I, I think he's still trying to figure, out, figure it out in many ways, um, what uh, uh, his role and what um, – uh, I think his specialty can be in the NBA, but the way we see it going and what he does well now, I think is uh, offensive rebounding. I think he's he, he's he's elite. I think blocking shots, he's elite. Um, I think defensive rebounding, he's going to get better. And and then as a uh, defensive player, you know, he's a, he's 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 really a solid uh, defender. We needed um, um, more physicality with 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 our with our uh, with our team, um, a, a screen setter, a roller, um, uh, somebody that will always challenge. You know, like uh, put a body on on, on guys, and that's what uh, Biombo does. Um, but I think uh, he has one of the longest wingspans in the NBA. You know, so he can create great. Um, uh, havoc, whether it's uh, especially, I I think rebounding his specialty now is offensive rebounding, and uh, he gets he gets in there. But um, yeah, yeah, I, I think he's, he's he's going to provide us good energy and and uh, and uh, yeah, a, a physical presence. Thanks, Zach. Do we have any other questions? Uh, Masai, it's Steve Brotherston at Pro B-Ball Report. Uh, just, how are you doing? How are you? Yeah. I'm just wondering, how how much did Bismack benefit from the activities that you've been doing in Africa for a really long time in terms of getting him to the States? I, di I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Could you say it again? Uh, just, I was wondering, how much did Bismack uh, benefit from 
the activities you've been doing for a long time in Africa and getting him to the United States? Um, I think Bismarck had a different route. You know, he um, uh, played a little bit, uh, played a little bit here, and uh, and then uh, he found a way to uh, to get to Europe, which I think helped him um, uh, quite uh, quite a bit. And um, uh, he didn't go as much through uh, an example of what like a Gogi Deng went through um, uh, in in. Uh, uh, in Africa, here yeah, going through a couple of the camps and um, and and really really seeing like a lot of development. You know, like um, Bismarck had a, I think he had a harder uh, route uh, in 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 developing, uh, but he also had the good opportunity of uh, of playing in Europe. Um, I think which which helped him a little bit um, and led him to uh, to play in the Hoop Summit. Um, so. The feel for the game, you know, every, all, uh, with African players, you know, it 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 it, it comes with time. It, they develop. You can you can tell, you know, like um, you 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 only you only need them to have the interest in playing the game. You know, like you want guys that love the game. And Bismarck absolutely loves the game. You know, he's they're all in here. You know, these NBA players are exceptional. You know, they they're here for camp and they come in here and they're all, they're all working out at seven o'clock, six thirty in the morning and get trying to sneak in a couple of workouts. And he's one of those guys that's a basketball junkie. So, um, I think he's going to continue to get better and better.